All right, a couple new batteries in the gal and a little bit of oil. See if she'll crank on it for us. Hey, it sounds better. Okay, have I done the welcome back thing for the episode two of the land improvement project here in Jerome? I, I, I just go off completely. I'm trying to work and talk. And most days I have a hard time breathing and walking, so shows how that works. It's not day two, it's episode two of the land improvement project here in Jerome. Uh, first episode, you guys will see mostly everything that we've gotten done so far, except for I did work a little bit yesterday afternoon, which was Sunday, uh, clearing on a fence line. So we'll give you guys a little overview of what we've gotten done so far uh, with the drone so you guys can see that. But a quick jump back to episode one here. We uh, did a lot of little clear, clear land, clear, clear, clear trees. We cleared some trees out of some waterway and we got uh, a load of pipe delivered from Princo here uh, to do this improvement project. Well, we just about got it all delivered. Bandit, of course, riding around in a pickup truck. Uh, being a supervisor, Colt uh, learned why God made a skid steer. Uh, and then we did a little bit of an overview of what we got cleaned up getting ready to put in inlets and this is a little bit of a tree clearing project that I did on Sunday off camera. But you guys will get a little closer look at that. This episode, tiling. Mm. which i'm excited about got a beautiful day got a beautiful week to continue on this project we like it we like it we like it i got a new shovel or shovels i mean how else am i supposed to lean around all day dead ends so for you that have been around as long as the channel has been you'll know that one of the first brands that i worked with was soil max and uh we had the tile plow hooked up to the 9400 and uh, made a pretty awesome video about that. Um, since then, I've purchased the Tile Plow and uh, still one of my favorite companies to work with. Great company, great people. And uh, we'll kind of do a little more of an overview, catch up on how the plow works. Uh, I think this is my fourth year with it, four years. Four years, that's like 28 in dog years. He's been tiling for 28 years. Talk about experience. The first thing, we're gonna do is uh first thing I ever get to the field is so I gotta set up the base station. My plow runs RTK for the correction to actually install the tile extremely accurately. Uh, sub inch accuracy. The globe on the top, but I gotta have my fixed base station point. So we gotta get it knocked out first. Colts here. You just gotta plug in a couple plugs and uh, set up a cable or set up a battery and a tripod and you're ready to roll. That's it. My lights are on, surveying. Colt, have I told you the rule about the base station? Don't be on it. Yeah, don't even look at it. Just <laughs> no vehicles anywhere right here. I need to get me a tile flag. I should have brought some of those and stick it up in the air. And here's a little better look at what I've gotten done so far uh, with the ditch here. But what I ended up doing is pulling all the trees out. Obviously the trees need to be moved. Colt's gonna do that with the skid steer but what i did is uh i ended up putting the brush cutter on when there's a lot of little tree limbs and stuff like that they're always hard to clean up and it just mulched it worked really good made that look really darn nice we have not gotten that side done yet All right, colt's gonna grab a couple do double wall outlets here and we'll just see if we can't do a tile run Take her on down there. On at the Out Terrace. Outlet. We're gonna hop in here and do a quick survey and then uh, pre-rip it. I do not need a pre-rip it, but we did a webinar actually one night and that was a question that was asked is do you need a pre-rip? 
with a six inch, I do not need a pre rip. Um, could I spin out when it gets greasy? Yeah, I could. Um, but I still pre rip it. I just pre rip it a little bit above depth. What that does is just ensure for me that I'm not going to hit anything. And it's a lot easier to like adjust when you already you aren't putting a pipe in the ground. And when it comes to like the mains and stuff like that, they're extremely important. So spending a little bit of time to uh, do a, a pre-rip, it, it's really no big deal. It's just a, a quick safety and insurance thing for me um, to know that when I go to actually install the, uh, the main that I want to install, that it installs uh, really well. But this is going to be a big, big main here. Big, big main. I mean, I think we're going to go a total of like 130 feet. So watch out. That's it right there. So then I'm just going to back her on back down the hill and drop her on in. So on here is an in survey in an install mode. This is in teleslope. It makes running the plow super, super easy to do. Minimum depth is 28, maximum depth. Uh, that's where we're going to want to go to like 38 target depth. We'll say 30 is fine. That's fine. We're going to go a little deeper than that when we pull this gal in. But we'll pre rip it real quick. Hit the check mark. So now we need to, this controls my plow. Go plow down. Once we get it down there a little bit, we hit the auto level, which levels us out. Then we plow down, plow down, which tells me my minimum starting depth is 28. So we're going to be close to that. Put myself into first gear, which is up over here on the pole. The then we just put her in first. I just let her eat in on in a little bit and then I hit the start install so it starts doing its deal and then we have to put the plow on the float and then we just chug on up the hill you gotta lock my diffs usually there we are 30 inches then we'll go back back into the hole string the pipe and uh, pull it in for realsies we'll hit the stop install I'll pitch my plow up it'll we'll start to bring me up out of the ground this plow is completely controlled by pitch and those wheels that you guys see out there have nothing to do with the depth it is strictly which I turned the float off now it is strictly for uh, carrying the plow from one place to the other. The plow is guided through the ground with the pitch of the plow, which the Soil Max plows are actually really kind of design special uh, compared to everything else on the market, which I'll show you later on in the video. But for now, let's get, let's get one pipe in the ground. I got the itch. We won't use the feeder for this one. We'll, like, we'll go without it, it's short.
guy ought to put it in two wheel drive when he decides to drive it off the side of a mountain. That's feeling school. Be nice. We gotta be there. All right. Another rule: tape's cheap. Digging stuff up, pain in the butt. This deal, and flip it across like that, and do a loop once, and do the same. Do that direction? Like that. Do you cover the whole top? No, just twice. And that's probably like overkill. overkill. It ain't gonna come off there. I've had one tile line pop off when Molly was helping me. My natural position. It's about all I'm good for. Sometimes if it goes not good, and I ain't much good for this either, really. Bandit, you working hard today or are you just messing around? That's what I figured. Didn't want to talk about it. Not gonna tell on yourself, are you? Finally, some stairs to get out of this hole. Not bad, man, not bad. Goodness, we're gonna stick her again. We might be done pulling pipe for the day. I really can't believe how greasy it is under that. We got about 12 foot to go to get done. So here's a really good example of what I can run into with the quad track. It was, had rained like the previous couple days and then um, it frozen it down a little bit and things got slippery. And another reason why I do a pre-rip right here is I actually have a little more pipe than what the pre-rip is. And I think I'm about 46 inches or so here. And the quad track, has not ran out of power here it's just that i've ran out of kind of traction and the quad track it will continue to eat its way through the top layers that are slimy here and just keep inching along and inching along and inching along it just has to bite down through uh the, i guess you could call the slime uh until it can actually grab a hold of something and then continue to move forward but the mixture between running out of a pre-rip and then actually this rent run right here went into a really really tight clay um, after we dug the start holes into it uh, it got kind of tough to pull this but it can do it it's not it's not the horsepower it's the weight and the traction and when you get into these greasy situations this was about the middle of the day right here uh, kind of the worst time to actually pull so it actually gets easier to pull later in the day uh, here or you're pulling first thing in the morning. It's just right when that sun starts to have the temperature to let the ground get slippery again. You just have to sit there and eat your way through it and go pretty darn slow. But that's something that I wanted to illustrate to you guys is that this can be uh, the challenging part. And all you have to do is just kind of hang out and wait until conditions get a little bit better. But right there, you can see the quad track. It's just still going forward it's just eating its way through and it's not muddy 
it's just still got a little bit of frozenness and a little bit of mud on top of it and it just has to eat its way through that little bit of frozen ground until it can grab something solid but we'll get it in that track's big enough to lay pipe in right now from the tractor Bag on. got her done though this is a little bit of a probably a quote unquote not farmer terminology but uh don't say well in a bog hole if you know what i mean so there's times when we have moisture in the ground that by the time we get done with the run and i get back here water to do running. this part there's water running already it's crazy This one's got four hours. We're good here. You remember how to do this? I cut a hole, I shove that bolt up through the top of it, yeah? Yeah, Just lay it like that. Yep. Remember which, where it is. You can kind of do this, or if these are made kind of right, one of the points yeah. is about sharp enough to kind of stab it. Stab it. You can not use your drill. Yeah, we didn't have a drill bit. That's all. And shiver up through. Colt and I are going to dig uh, on the first second bottom with the new excavator, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, we're going to jump forward to Future Bend. As you guys saw in Teleslope just a second ago, something that Soil Max has been done a really good job at is the Teleslope installing tile, making it easy for us to do that. One of the things that you want to do it with confidence, you can actually have a tile plan designed for you through FlowX, but here's Future Ben talking about FlowX. So Future Ben checking in here from the office, so let's talk about FlowX real quick. So FlowX is basically the peace of mind that you guys need to have a good unbiased tile plan done for your fields to know that your tile system is going to work correctly uh, as in terms of being installed correctly and then also actually operate the way that it should with the right drainage coefficients and things along those lines so that you know what size and what grade of pipe you need to be installing. So what do you get when you uh, actually download the app and use uh, FlowX to design your next tile plan on your farm? First off, you're going to get an unbiased tile plan. Now, maybe however you might want that designed. It might be like you want to have the least amount of start holes or the easiest runs, things along those lines. It's an unbiased tile plan for you. You'll also get 
tile parameters, which are your minimum depths, your maximum depths, your minimum slopes, and then also your target depth. And then a big one that helps you not overbuy or underbuy and be short fittings and stuff like that is you'll get to know how much pipe you're going to need to order to put that plan in, and you also get a list of fittings that you need to order to install this plan. That's huge. And then, of course, on top of it, you get the peace of mind that the design that you're installing is going to operate efficiently in the way that it should. So what FlowX is doing is giving you guys that might not have the really expensive software or knowledge how to design those plans access to having those professionally designed plans. So how does it work? Well, you download the FlowX app or you can visit the website. Both of them will be linked down in the description. You basically outline your field. You answer a few survey questions. You call 811 to get all your utilities marked in the field. And then you answer some questions like, where do you guys think that the outlet should be in your field? It asks you those questions. The next thing you do is if you happen to have any elevation data, maybe you have an RTK uh, art system and being able to survey your field, uh, you can submit that or actually they have access using LiDAR to pull the actual elevation data from your fields for the majority of the United States. So then once 811 has shown up to your field, you actually use the app, you head on out to the field, and it uses the GPS on your phone, and say you have a water line going through the northwest corner of your field, you use the GPS line to uh, walk the water line to mark any utilities, making it really, really simple to have a plan that's not gonna have any mishaps and say for instance maybe you have some old tile lines out there you're actually able to use the utility tracker in the app to mark all the old tile lines maybe helping with the design of the tile plan so how long does it take you to get this back well if you happen to have 811 called and you have everything done get that done really efficiently and submitted uh you should have it back in a few days what is the cost Cost is running, I think, right around $15 an acre, which is very low end when you're talking about doing a tile installation and making sure that it works. Um, and if you were to go out and buy the software to do this, that's a very affordable cost, especially if you're getting it designed where maybe you have less start holes, less connections, or even needing less pipe to actually install. It's good money spent. So if, you're ever, if you have a tile plow, doing this and you have a piece of ground that you want to have a plan designed for check out flow x like i said links are down in the description you'll actually see them around at the trade shows talking about it stop chat with them about it good people flow x check it out so we have the first run done and we have now we're going to move into uh two more short little runs the one right here and the one right there just kind of debating on if i could get it done with one I'd probably it'd be right on the cusp of it, I think. So we're going to be safe and go with two short little runs. One right there and one right there. So this one's responsible for the water that's coming this way. And this one's responsible for the water coming from this angle. But there's a lot of water that's coming off the, the flats that's trying to work its way this way too. Next morning, we uh, quit last night and we had actually a little bit of issues with the skid steer. We 
we're hoping it was low oil but it does it does goofy things let's see how she does in this cold start hopefully better than me pretty nice in here yeah probably warm I shut that door take yeah that's off. that's why you that's the the cab was worth it cab was way worth it spend your morning in a warm cab versus a breezy open station blue excavator I still think we got to get rid of this key. Uh, get a screwdriver. Yeah, I think so too. That way it fits the program a little better. Starts good. Well, excavator started. Tractor started. Two trucks started. Bandit is on the move. It is a cold son of a gun out here today in America. I'll tell you that for free. So, we are moving in on our next tile run, but we uh, got fertilizer here today, which didn't know was coming today. I probably could have figured out that it wasn't done, but there was no tracks. But I did. Well, I guess I wasn't that observant, so. Not ideal to have your fertilizer guys just like in fertilizer when you're here. Colt's on his way to go put some uh, attachments from the skid steer around my base station. Um, no way they don't run over my base station. It might get slimy on me here today. I hope it doesn't, but it might. Uh, we're going to cut out a hump where I need to pull this tile up the hill at and then uh, get ready to pull this next run. Just, How nice is that? Being a cow. Golly, it's the little things in life. Right here is a berm, and that berm's dumping into this trench. It's a trench cutting down there. It doesn't cut all the way to the ditch, so I think I can fix it. it, it like I probably showed you earlier, but this is going to be a challenging one. But I'm going to give it my best shot. See if we can't get it uh, working in our favor. Probably gonna have to find like a borrow pit and uh, get the red dump truck out here and dump truck load some dirts from someplace into this place to uh, basically fill this trench up and cut it down a little bit. So we'll see how it goes. Oh, I wish the thumb wasn't there right now. So I want to smooth out this hump um, to uh, basically make the grade more uniform, make it easier on the plow to uh, go through so it doesn't have like a up and over that it has to adjust for. Just cut it out, save uh, a little bit of depth, just to try and install just a little bit more um, precisely, I guess you could say. I'm going to want to be about 60 feet, 65, 70 feet from, uh, from the fence row too, so we'll have to measure that off.
So we're going to try and string this one out, but we're not going to have enough pipe, I don't think. I don't, we're not going to have enough pipe. So we'll have to go load up again and show you guys that part too. Here's how we do this. So, see how they designed this? There's a uh, there's holes there. You see that? That you pin. Lock it. Yep, you lock it. So you grab that pin up and down. There you go. Good there. And the holes make it so you can see through it when you're backing up. It's a lot easier with the tractor than a pickup truck. And then this one, you just reach this in. You have to do this. Side of the tube. It's all back into this tube, and then you just you shove that onto it. That onto the spud there. Right. Down is up, and up is down. Bass backwards. It's tilting the table down, though. That's so not, so if, it's in that's this, not how it, if it's in this position right now, you're lifting it up. No, you're tipping it down. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so then put that back part back over, and then I cut all these strings, except for the black ones. You leave two of the black ones, um, that way, uh, it doesn't. Up is up, down is down. Forward, backward. All self-explanatory. I'm not sure about all this. So we got our inlets, our inlet like terrace kind of laid out there if you guys can see the little red flag, white flag, and then the orange flag right there. This one's going to be a challenging one because I'm going to have to basically get a berm bringing the water to this guy. So I'm going to have to like, that one's going to be my challenging one. We got this one exposed. Get it uh, 
get it installed real quick. Right there's where we're going to want our inlet. Just cut that rib. Well guys and gals, we're going to end this video here, but we're going to give you a quick little dry own flyover of the four runs that we've gotten done. Started a little bit of dirt work as you guys can see in there where I was finding this drone. But we've got four mains put in. That means that we have uh, one, two, three, four mains to, uh, yeah, four mains to go and we'll be covering those in the next video. But um, in the next video, we'll have it, I'll try and edit it here shortly and get another one out really quickly for you guys. Uh, we break down a couple of times, and, but and the project expands quite a bit here in the next video. Hopefully have it out in the next couple of days. So thank you guys for hanging out with us. Everybody have a happy and safe New Year's, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Don't forget about FlowX. Episode two of the land improvement projects. But I need to move the tile pile in, which means I need to start the quad track, which I'm a little nervous if she'll start. She's had a pretty easy year so far. Just installed a little bit of tile and the pumpkin patch, which you guys will see. That might be my last video of the year. I don't know. Might be. Just might make it my last video of the year. Title it like building an agritourism farm in four months. Like a crazy idiot. Hi, sweetheart. She's she's missed me. I can tell. Oh, she's dead. She's deader than dead. That's gonna take some juice. Oh, okay. Dramatic cold start. Pause. I was gonna charge them, but instead I've decided to give the girl some love. Get her a new set of batteries for Christmas. Okay. Top of the morning. Had to go get my face numb this morning, so uh, I was late to the party here, but uh, got the batteries put back in. New batteries are in, getting the what you call it? Hooked onto here so that uh, I don't go anywhere. And uh, got to clean some. Got to clean the something. I don't know what he's cleaning. He's cleaning something though, and he's passionate about it. He went to go get some stuff to do it. So we'll uh, we'll be ready to pull some tile here in a minute. You know, you got good practice. Hmm. I love practicing tightening bolts, you know, loosen them back up. It's one of the gets, you get better at remembering which way is left and which way is right, don't you? I still don't know which way is left or right, so. I had a cheat sheet when I was a child learning how to do left and right. Do you know the cheat sheet that you carry with you every day? What's that? The left and right? Yeah. I cut my right finger off, so I just knew that that was easier. <laughs> I didn't have to look at my hands when I was a kid. I just knew. Because I'm gonna have a little bit of zip to them. 